Welcome back to the Med Smarter Question of the Week. Before we begin, please click that like button and also subscribe and turn the bell on so you'll be notified when we post new content. Let's begin on that question. As always, we start with the last sentence of the question and then we'll read the rest of the vignette. What is the most appropriate treatment for this patient's coagulopathy? A 50-year-old obese female with poorly controlled, non-insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus presents with fever to 39.4 degrees Celsius or 102.9 degrees Fahrenheit, jaundice, hypotension, and an acute onset of right upper quadrant pain. Abdominal imaging shows multiple gallstones and cholecystitis. An urgent colectomy is performed, and subsequent gallbladder fluid and blood cultures grow aerobic, non-lactose fermenting, oxidase positive, gram negative rods. The blood tests are as follows. Hematocrit 25%, white blood cell count 15,300, platelet count 80,000, INR or international normalized ratio of 3.2, D-dimer 8,200, fibrogen levels are low. Microscopic inspection of peripheral blood smears shows schistocytes and multiple helmet cells. Clinically, there is no evidence of active bleeding. What is the most appropriate treatment for this patient's coagulopathy? Well, before we look at the answer choices, let's talk about these lab values. For a female, the normal hematocrit levels are going to be 36 to 46%. So that 25% is low. White blood cell count typically is going to be in the range of 4,500 to 11,000. So 15,300 is elevated. Platelet count is typically between 150,000 to 400,000. So a level of 80 means that we are very low. Our INR level should be around 1, so we are high on our INR. And our normal D-dimer levels should be less than 0.5, so we are very high on our D-dimer levels. Once again, fibrinogen levels has already told us that it is low. So now that we know that piece of information, let's go ahead and take a look at our answer choices. A, fresh frozen plasma. B, vancomycin. C, amoxicillin. D, astreonam. Or E, vitamin K. Take a minute, read the question and answer choices again, come up with your answer, and then write the answer in the comment box below. Well, we know from this question that we're dealing with a microbacteria because the blood cultures and the gallbladder fluid grow an aerobic, non-lactose fermenting, oxidase positive, gram negative rod. What does that describe? If you remember back to your microbiology, this is Pseudomonas. So Pseudomonas, along with fever, jaundice, hypotension, and right upper quadrant pain, this gives us that great picture of cholecystitis, which we've got a diagnosis for already. They did a colectomy. Now what we're trying to deal with is this issue of bleeding and our lab values. So we are dealing with uh, what appears to be DIC with our elevated D-dimer, low platelets. But we also have this sepsis uh, due to pseudomonas. That is something that's important to remember here. So what do we need to do for this patient? We don't see any signs of active bleeding, so this is a key point here. So with no active bleeding, signs of bacterial growth of pseudomonas, we want to treat that pseudomonas first and foremost because that's our underlying condition causing us to be in DIC. So how do we treat pseudomonas? Fresh frozen plasma is not. That's going to be treating DIC only. We want to treat the underlying condition here. Vancomycin. Vancomycin is a very good medication to use for things like methicillin-resistant Staph aureus and C. diff. However, we don't use this for Pseudomonas, so Vancomycin is not an option here. Amoxicillin. While amoxicillin is uh, a great uh, extended-spectrum medication, it does not provide any coverage for Pseudomonas. As trianam, I do know that we use as trianam for pseudomonas, so I'm going to keep that as an option. And let's continue on. E vitamin K, that will not help us get rid of the pseudomonas infection, so let's mark that out. That leaves us with D as our final choice. And D is the correct answer as trianam. So what we're seeing with this patient with our fever, jaundice, Hypotension and acute onset right upper quadrant pain. This is classic of the Charcot's triad. 
uh, and we add that with our leukocytosis, which is our, our high white blood cell count, that gives us that picture of cholecystitis. So we're dealing with the aerobic non-lactose fermenting oxidase positive grand negative rod on top of the signs and symptoms of disseminated intravascular coagulation or DIC. So we're going to use as trianam in this case. Uh, as trianam, if you can remember, is a beta lactamase resistant antibiotic that it will interfere with our cell wall biosynthesis. So it's going to bind to the penicillin binding protein three and stop the cell wall formation uh, in those bacteria. If you are studying for the step two or step three boards, remember that as trianam does have a low bioavailability uh, when given orally, so we will use this either intravenous or nebulized to help with that bioavailability. Thank you.